So if they handed you that, you'd be like, all right, let's go. This is good. Good, good job on your homework. That's what you'd say to them, right? <laughs> I, I would say that. Welcome to Inside the Bot, the podcast that brings you to the forefront of business automation. Brought to you by OpenBots, the game changer in the world of intelligent automation. Automation. Ever wondered how to streamline document processing from months to seconds to seconds? Or how to skip those pesky bot licenses? You're in the right place. An asset manager, wealth manager, they every vertical that we, we talk with, I'm sure they're thinking okay, well, technology with AI and these kind of things, I got to do something with this. So what, what can we, ex what's some practical uh, results that we can expect from adopting a solution like this when you automate term sheets within an application like Salesforce? Well, uh, it's a term sheet is a really um, a content dense document. And um, to, to have to get data from it on a regular basis. Um, and, you know, this, this is something people generally will have to do um, either with their clients' potential investments, their existing clients' holdings. Um, you know, if it's a company that's going to be selling other people's stuff, they might be bringing in the data from, um, you know, from all their potential uh, um I guess the, the investments that they're going to be selling and there's a lot of data, it's data dense. So it takes a lot of time to put that into the system. There's no reason we shouldn't automate that. Right. I mean, that's, it's not something where it requires a great deal of thought. It's just a matter of you want your end client to be able to access that, but you know, you don't want them to have to look through this, you know, thick and then, you know, newsprint, skinny page that's that's got you know i, I mean probably ten, you know ten thousand words a page or something silly like that but okay so what's the so what's the problem statement of this though if we can think in terms of volumes because you know okay the, the term sheet that's kind of it can be a lot of different things but they're, they're seeing a lot of these and i guess what i'm getting is that it's, it's very manual but what what volumes are we are we thinking of that we, we could automate maybe in a given month um well, I mean, I, I, depending on how many, you know, on how many times you, you, you clone your resources, I don't think there's really a ceiling, but, you know, an example of maybe something we've done would be um, calendars, you know, the monthly calendar of a company that releases certain products every month, right? Um, they've got, you know, all the major investment houses, you know, your, you know, JP Morgan and um, B of A Merrill and, and uh, Morgan Stanley and, and so on and so forth. Each of them will have a calendar every month. And then each of their calendars will have 10 to 15 different investments on it. This is just for maybe, you know, this is just in like the st structured note field. Um, you've got 10 of them and you've got maybe you know, like I said, 15 per, so, you know, 150 um, different term sheets you would have to go through and get all the information and and um, get it into your system. So uh, it's quite a bit of manual work. So you're saying the variations of these term sheets can be just cumbersome and problematic then? Y yeah, and, it, and they don't all, like, handle information in the same way. You know, if you're, if they're talk they might talk about pricing, one might talk about pricing by saying, you know, um, you know, giving you a percentage point of um, commission that's added or something. And one might price it on a discount basis, saying like, you know, it's it's priced at, you know, 98.2, you know, which means, you know, you got a 1.8 commission on it. Um, so you have to kind of you have to understand the logic differences and be able to normalize the data. So mm. all your clients see it in the same format, you know, for each investment. Otherwise they'll be confused and, and it, you know, and you won't look like you really have a kind of a, an organized uh, platform. So, I mean, this is really key for, for the, the companies that are doing this because they have their own platforms and they're trying to get the data into the platform, um, you know, in a way that's uh, consistent. 
and Salesforce is where a lot of a lot of companies are starting to uh, build their stuff. Right. So, and it's not only, it's not Salesforce specific to it. That just happens to be the example from one of our clients, but again, mm -hmm. they, they can, they can, whatever system, their preferences, whatever their, their customer in relation, whatever that is, they can plug and play, correct? With, with what this solution is. Oh, sure. Yeah, absolutely. You know, either, and, and it can be integrated with, um, with an API, um, you can do the data entry through an API or you could do the data entry through um, the user interface. You know, you could use use bots to to automate just the same screen that a human being would go in and to, you know type in the information. And speaking of bots too, because I, I want to just maybe spend a minute talking about maybe there's been a mindset shift here because you know automations bots. There's some folks out there that are probably familiar with them, but even if they're not, there's been a shift to using tools to extract data accurately, efficiently because of powering tools like ours with, with GPT. So how does that change the way that a financial wealth management company approaches their data from the get-go when they sit down with you and say, Ford, okay, we want to do something. Okay, maybe we'll start with term sheets. But how does that broaden the picture or change and or change the starting point? Sure, sure. Um, well, in the past, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I think a lot of companies would have just maybe shied away from dealing with term sheets. And the, the reason is, is that the, the way we used to do the, the extraction is we would use machine learning. We would use zonal OCR. We we'd draw a box around a field we needed to extract. We would, um, you know, and, and, and the system would identify the coordinates of it. Um, and, you know, you would train it over and over and it would get used to it. But the problem here is that these change investment to investment, you know, a piece of information that's usually on page 32 or 322 isn't always on the same page. So you have to be able to extract that um, regardless of where it is. And that's where AI comes in because AI actually reads that context and it knows what you're looking for. So you, you ask it in, in human terms, you know, what, um, you know, what's the uh, uh, commission paid to the selling representative of this security? And um, regardless of what the format is, um, because the large language models are so smart, they'll be able to extract that data regardless of what page it's on, um, just based on the prompt that you associate with that field. So th if I could say it in a, in a different way, so the, the major shift from, from where we were was it was location-based OCR recognizing things and training it spe on specific coordinates. Now it's contextual-based. It's understanding mm -hmm. the document as a whole. So it doesn't need that time to train anymore out of the box. It just understands language. So then it can therefore find the information that exists within that particular document, correct? Exactly, exactly. And it's, it, it really is something to see it work. It's, um, you know, it, it's just, it's, it's a totally different thing than we've ever, ever used. Um, I mean, we still use um, machine learning for classification. Um, you know, if, if you don't know what document you're gonna be uploading, like if, you know, you're getting a bunch of client documents sent in um, through your, you know, maybe they're uploading them to your website through their private portal and you need a bot to grab them and to identify what they are. Well, we still use machine learning for the identification purposes, but then when we're going to extract data, that's what we use the, um, the AI for. This is the flow chart uh, for the process we've been talking about. You can see um, here we've got um, you got the email coming in um, received uh, with um, the monthly list of these um, uh, offerings that these asset management companies send out to all the different dealerships, broker dealer, broker dealers, and investment advisors. And um, so we're we're going to have a bot go in, pull the data from that, take the issuer name and the QCIP, um, and 
we're going to populate a um, kind of a list. This is sort of their internal list of where they're um, where they're keeping track of this. Um, at the same time, we're going to download all the term sheets and submit each of them to documents GPT here. Um, and I'll show you in just a second the breakdown of the documents GPT processing. But um, long story short, the data is extracted um, in JSON format. Um, and then it's added to Salesforce via an API. And um, then also another um, uh, another purpose for the data extraction um, is to populate the monthly um, offering sheet um, that we had started populating with the issuer name and the QCIP. Uh, so that's the broad broad brush strokes and um, if you look at the internal view of what's going on in documents, um, a, a task is created here. Um, then we have um, a pre-processing, which is documents doing things like straightening pages and removing background. Um, we've got uh, pages being classified and finally data extracted. It's extracted and then pending data verification. So depending on your settings and your thresholds, you're going to have a person uh, that will actually validate that the, the data extracted is correct. Um, uh, or, you know, if you set your threshold for a higher level of confidence, then you'll, you know, maybe spend more time validating versus lower level of confidence. You spend less time validating. Um, that's just a, you know, process specific, company specific decision. Um, then uh, once data is validated, uh, then the user marks it verified and the, the output is sent to the JSON file. Additionally too, so that, that identification piece, so that was, did we take that for granted? It's just, okay, so if you send me five different emails, I could look at them and say, okay, yeah, this is a term sheet, this is a annual statement. I can, because I'm a human, I can understand what that is, but that is a manual process that we just, in general, normally it works fine to do that, but it's a human that's doing that. But are we taking it for granted that now the machine learning can do that categorization, that identification right away? Um, well, you shouldn't. Um, <laughs> it's definitely, it requires a little work on the front end, um, but it's uh, the technologies, that technology is pretty, pretty tried and true. Um, you know, we've gotten good at machine learning, um, and, you know, the techniques, you know, of how you train it, um, you know, not overtraining, but like, but really being organized up front and having the right variety of um, training documents. So you want to first, you configure it, then you, you show it all the variations of the document. And then if something's really just a different document type, then you set up a different document type. And um, as long as you're organized and you have your documents kind of ready um, up front, then the process is easy. You know, the, the, we, someone's already written the code, it, mm. the, the tool's there. Um, you just want to be um, organized up front. So I wouldn't, I, wouldn't get, I wouldn't take it for granted, but I also wouldn't be afraid of it. It's, you know, it, it, it's a pretty pretty doable process. It, I want to focus too on the human element of it as well. So it, what's the feedback been when, when we implemented this, when they started automating this term sheet, what was the experience of the employees? Did they say, okay, this is great. We don't have to do this anymore. We can just focus on other things. Or was, was there kind of a ramp up period to get used to this new way that they're doing an old process? Like what was that experience like for them? Um, well, can't necessarily speak for every employee, but the ones that I worked with, um, it was really kind of an eye opener. They, they got to see like how the whole thing works. They, I mean, going into it, I think people are a little um, reticent. They're 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 a little concerned about maybe am I losing my job here? What's what's going on? And um, but we really depend on them. I mean, they they help us understand the process, help us get all of these things um, organized, 
they communicate the process and help us define what success looks like. Um, so management defines what success looks like, but the people that use the automation and that use the upstream and downstream applications from it, they're really defining success because they need to be happy. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it saves people an inordinate amount of time. You've got work that no one wants to do. No one wants to sift through just prospectuses and term sheets looking for specific data. Um, so taking that off their plate is huge. And I think people realize after going through the process of doing the analysis with us and then participating in the testing that bringing AI and automation bots um, and document extraction or intelligent document processing, bringing that into the mix, it really, it's not a replacement. You know, you need your existing team, but it definitely takes a lot of weight off the team. You know, when they, when, when time is, a, is a pre, at a premium, uh, busy work is a real, is, is a real showstopper. And it, it's, you know, it's going to hurt your chances of being more profitable and adds more risk, you know, because things get missed. So um, I would say, you know, to, to round out a long answer to a short question, um, you know, I think the result or the uh, impression was very positive. And can you share any specifics on the technical part of this? Like how it kind of like, can you walk us through how it works and little components of it and, and why each little, little stop is important as well? Um, well, sure. The, so the, the robots, um, they are like the support digital support workers that, um, facilitate being able to do the document extraction. Um, I mean, you could have a human being go onto the website and drag a document in and have it get, get extracted, but that totally defeats the purpose of it. Um, you, you need to identify what the input is in, in the case of, of a lot of, uh, calendar type processes, you're going to go to maybe an email and you're going to go and extract, you're going to go grab the attachments or click a link and go to the asset manager's website and get their term sheet there. Um, and you can automate that whole process. Then you're going to grab that and the bot is going to send it or upload it into the um, extraction system, OpenBots Documents GPT in this case. Um, and then um, OpenBots will process it. And then you have another bot that comes through and picks it up and does whatever it is you need to do with it. So we talked about entering in Salesforce. Um, in some cases, um, when we do extractions, we're using it to, uh, to to validate other information to make sure that something we have in this this area is correct, you know. And we're using what we extracted as a source of truth. Um, uh, so those are a couple of the the ways you use it. Um, and then to get it configured, it it really is something that actually anyone could do. I, I would recommend using a developer, uh, you know, a real professional developer to do the, the, the overall automation, but the training of documents for the classification, I kind of already explained that, you know, you, you, you submit the documents um, and then you identify them as a particular template, a uh, variation of a template um, and you, you train them and then um, machine learning will get to know know what it is and um, and then you have a feedback loop of doing it again and again till it gets more and more accurate. With the AI, what you do is you can actually create the template without the document. You create the template, um, identify which fields you want to extract and you name the template. And the most important part of each field is the prompt engineering. You're engineering prompts that are going to ask the AI for the document in question, for, for the data in question. So you do all that, then you run a document through. Then you test 
okay, are these questions that we're asking the AI, are they, are they working? Um, you know, if, if they're maybe not returning just the right thing, you can actually use compound prompts where you're asking a question and specifying, you know, I want this, you know, this account number and um, I only want the last four digits or, um, you know, that kind of thing. So you can be very specific with the AI using plain language. So we're, you know, we're historically, we would have used technical things like regular expressions and field validation. Now we're just using plain English questions, but mm -hmm. it just there's a knack to, to doing it. So it's, you know, so it's effective. And you, but that's the tweaking. That. So that, that is the tweaking part, right? So that's what yeah. part of what your team handles is refining these just they're just general English questions, but they're refined and asked the right way so that they have the right output when they're interacting with whatever document that it's looking at, right? Exactly. Yep. Okay. And you want to work with you, you, you need to work with your, your team and your specialists in what the, um, the downstream application is. So if it's Salesforce you're doing, you want to work with your, um, you want to work with your Salesforce specialists uh, to identify like specifically what the data format needs to be, um, you know, so you don't run into conflicts at different points. So once you have that done, then you can fine tune everything just right. And let's talk about some ranges. Cause if, if I was a wealth manager or managing a business like that, I would kind of want to know, okay, this sounds interesting. It sounds like it could help with, certain aspects of it, but what's a ballpark range to implement and what are some ballpark, you know, cost invest to, to something like this. So could you share any of those details with us? Sure. Um, and this is going to sound like a, um, typical statement, but it depends, um, <laughs> yeah. you know, um, the, so the, the two things, right. There's, you gotta, you gotta see how long the thing is going to take. How long is this project going to take us? And the time is going to determine the cost. You're gonna if you're gonna use an offshore developer, um, you you're gonna pay anywhere um, from five to seven thousand a month, maybe. I would say for for that developer. That's um, a full time. That's that'd be for like a full time developer working like forty hours every week, right? Exactly, exactly. Um, somebody near shore or onshore is gonna be um, is gonna be considerably more. I would say near shore, you know, somebody in the, you know, in the United States time zones um, would not be, would, wouldn't be crazy more, but, you know, maybe in the nine, 9,000 range or something like that. Um, and, you know, if you have all your ducks in a row, meaning when you start the project, um, you have all of your sample documents ready and you have all of, you know, the important things that the developers need to do their work. Like you have a virtual machine set up for them to develop on. They have access to the systems they need to access so they can hit the ground running. Well, then you can probably knock one of these processes out in maybe a couple of months, um, you know, a, two, a couple of months project, depending on um, how complex, you know, the, where do you have to get, get the, um, where do you have to get the term sheets or whatever the input is? Um, but the process of um, creating the bot and then going through and training and tweaking the documents, um, those are the two main things. So ideally you could, I mean, if you had two developers and you had one working on the code and one working on the documents, you could, you could be more quick about it. Um, but I mean, I would say if you have some, if you have, if you're curious, um, call me and tell me about your process, and I'll and I'll give you a, like a just a ballpark estimate. But um, well, that that's kind of where, where I was thinking too. It would make sense, like you're talking about this. There's maybe some pre-planning work these wealth managers can do, and it's like get get these whatever sample doc, get the documents and know where they where you're getting them from, but get some sample documents so we can, or so your team can figure out what that path is going to be like that. Yeah, exactly. So if we're if we're doing a, a calendar, um, a monthly calendar, then you know have somebody from your company go in, 
download all of the term sheets, you know, from each company. And, you know, if there's, you know, if, if Morgan Stanley has four varieties of term sheet, download all four, and then, you know, put an Excel sheet together, list them, you know, so, so that's all clear. You don't want to be paying some developer for a time when you're just doing that kind of, you know, process prep and process analysis work. Now, mm -hmm. if, if you don't have the capacity, you don't have the people for it and, and you would rather just pay someone to do it, then, you know, you can, you can actually include a process analyst on your team and, you know, and they can do that for you. But um, I'm just trying to give you the idea is how do you do this lean and mean? Get ready with the, um, get ready with the samples and with the mapping. And I say mapping, meaning here's the data point, you know, we've extracted the price and then here's the field in Salesforce or an LOS or, or whatever your, um, you know, your, or your, 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 your platform that, you know, mm -hmm. your proprietary platform, here's what the field ID is. So, um, we'll know exactly where to, where to put it. And if there is an API, um, I would say have the docs ready. Um, th these are just things that, so we don't have to run them down, you know, once the project starts. Yeah. Okay. So ha ha have the documents and then know what you want out of the document. Maybe so let's say for example, it's 10 fields out of every term sheet and then right. where, where that applies or where, where does that follow through with that system they're using for this example, it's Salesforce. So you're saying mapping like those 10 things where and how it goes into, in the format into that application. Correct. Exactly. Exactly. So and if they handed you that, you'd be like, all right, let's go. This is good. Good. Good job on your homework. That's what you'd say to them. Right. <laughs> I, I would say that. I mean, <laughs> with Salesforce, it might mean that they've created like a custom object okay. and you know, so that I guess, I don't know if you call it like an object tree with the, um, you know, maybe it'd be a term sheet object with all the fields, you know, um, associated with it. Yeah. If you could provide that ahead of time, then, you know, you'd be well on, on your way to a, a fast, a fast analysis period. One week, one week on analysis and then off and developing. Okay. So it's a good challenge for anyone listening that's out there that's interested in this. Take one week, do your pre-planning analysis and then send over your questions. I'm sure, I'm sure Ford won't mind an email or LinkedIn message to kind of help you get started. I think it's a, it's a, there's a lot of opportunity in this too, right? Cause the scale is there with uh, the backbone of our tool. It's happened, happens to be usage based. So there's probably a lot of results there that they can expect when they, when they work on a process like this. Sure. And we'll, I mean, we we'll do it. The analysis, like the uh, scoping of it for free. I mean, we'll, we'll look at the process, talk to you. You can, have someone demonstrate it to us and, um, you know, we'll, we'll tell you just straight up what the feasibility is, ease of implementation, um, how long we expect that you would spend on it. And, you know, we'll also we'll even do a kind of a tentative project plan um, as well as a process flow that you'll be able to use, take back, look at the retur potential return on investment and decide, you know, whether or not it makes sense for you. Um, but, um, you know, when you're looking at any project, really the, just, just consider that the ones you want to do first are going to be the ones that people are doing, you know, almost every day. And I, I granted that, you know, you might have something like this where you're doing it on a monthly basis, but um, in my experience, there's so much stuff on the monthly calendar that, some, some teams, it takes them all month to do it. Mm -hmm. um, so think about that, you know, stuff that's, you know, mindless, um, you know, where you're error prone just because of, I mean, you just get bored and tired and, um, and, and human error um, and the repetitive. Complaints. Yeah, the complaints from the team too. That's a good, <laughs> it's yeah. like, hey, we, we, hey, Joe, we hate doing this stuff. Why do we have to do it? It's like, well, because that's how we make money. <laughs> right, but we can make it a little painless mm -hmm. and uh, kinder and gen gentler. 